My brothers and sisters, you are now watching the Gamer 2323. So just forget about the chores you're supposed to do. Put your feet up. Get your Kool-Aid fried chicken popcorn. Get whatever you may need. And I hope you enjoy the video. Every day I get the same question. PlayStation 4? Or Xbox One Gamer? I'm still trying to decide which one do I want my black bread. Well, I'm here to help you out, okay? Some people are still unsure which one do they want between that PlayStation 4 or that Xbox One. And one thing we do know is that the PlayStation 4 comes out November 15, 2013 in North America, November 29, 2013 in the Europe. That's one thing we do know. But... The rumor going around right now is that the Xbox One is going to come out on November 8th. <laughs> Not sure about that yet, but that's the rumor going on around right now. But one thing we do know is that both consoles, both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, will release in November. And if you are still unsure of which console you want, well, my brothers and sisters, you! I found the right video. I will be giving that 100% breakdown between the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, all the details you need to know. So at the end of the day, when you go to GameStop or you go to Walmart or you go to Best Buy or you go to Target or you go to uh freaking freaking the swap shop, wherever you go to get this system, at the end of the day, you can be 100% satisfied with your order. Am I already preaching? I do believe I am. <laughs> Anyways, I will be giving that 100% breakdown. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, hopefully this video will help you finally make your final decision set in stone, write it on a piece of paper, and send it to Microsoft and Sony, okay? So sit back, relax. PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One. Let's start off with the specs first, shall we? Yes, we shall. <laughs> now, at the end of the day, both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, specs-wise, they're very similar, okay? It's like apples and oranges, okay? But there are some differences between an apple and an orange. <laughs> right, 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 right. So let me get into the specs first. Now, the PlayStation 4, both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will, will be running an 8-core processor. The PlayStation 4 will have an x86 AMD Jaguar, and the Xbox One will have a custom AMD CPU. Going to the GPU, the PlayStation 4 will have an AMD Radeon graphics core next engine equal to a unit computing speed of 1.84 teraflops. The Xbox One GPU will be an 853 MHZ AMD Radeon GPU equal to a unit computing speed of 1.31 teraflops, okay? Now for you tech junkies out there, yes, the slight advantage goes to the PlayStation 4 as far as computing power, computing speed, whatever. You gotta give the slight advantage to the PlayStation 4 in that area. Now going to the RAM, okay? We all know both the PlayStation 4 and that Xbox One has eight gigabytes of RAM, but, there's, but, but there is a difference, okay? The Xbox One RAM is an eight gig gigabyte DDR3. Meanwhile, the PlayStation 4's RAM is an eight gigabyte GDDR5. Well, what does that mean, gamer? Well, I'm glad you asked, my brother. <laughs> Some will correct your brother if I'm wrong, but the difference between a DDR3 RAM and a GDDR5 is the D is the DDR3 is better for transferring you know smaller amounts of data and the GDDR5 is better for transferring larger amounts of data so pretty much what that means for the PlayStation 4 is I think in the long run game developers will be able to uh, uh, do more with their games on the PlayStation 4. I'm not going to. I'm not saying it's gonna. It's gonna be like this significant difference between the games on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. But I'm thinking in the long run, game developers will be will be able to add like more content, more exploration in their games on the PlayStation 4. Okay. Now going to the hard drive. We all know both the PlayStation 4 and that Xbox One. It's going to have a 500 gigabyte hard drive day one coming out the box, my brother. And that's great. Now, there's not really a difference between the hard drive. If you if you really want to, you know, uh, nitpick here, you can't uh, uh, remove the hard drive from the Xbox One, but you are able to remove the hard drive from the PlayStation 4. So let's just say, for instance, you like you want it like a... a, a Oh, a, a freaking one terabyte hard drive. <laughs> I don't know. You want a, a thousand, uh, a thousand gigabyte hard drive on your PlayStation 4. You could take out that 500 gig, get that 500 gig gigabyte hard drive, 
put in that 1000 gig and you have 1000 gigabytes of storage available on your PlayStation 4. On the Xbox One, that's not possible because you're not able to replace the hard drive, okay? I'm not trying to nitpick, just saying. The controllers. Now, both that Dual Shot 3 and Xbox doesn't really have a <laughs> the Xbox controller doesn't really have I, I mean I guess you just call it the Xbox controller but they need to have a name now but both the DualShock 3 and the Xbox controller are great controllers listen I'm not saying which one is better because that's an argument that will never end like some people love the Xbox 360 some some people say that the Xbox 360 controller is the best controller in gaming history okay and some people prefer the PlayStation controller you know with the dual and with the dual analog sticks and the uh and and the uh, D-pad and stuff like that so both the DualShock 4 on the PlayStation 4 and the new uh I guess tweaked uh controller on the Xbox one are both great controllers you know um the DualShock 4 is going to have the share button, it's going to have the touchpad, so it is going, going to have some new features on the DualShock 4 and stuff like that. The Xbox One controller really, the Xbox 3, 360 controller, again, was a great controller, so they didn't really change too much. They did make some, you know, mods, some mods, some modifications to the controller and stuff like that, but it's pretty much still the same. My only issue with that Xbox One controller... And I'm not trying to nitpick. <laughs> I swear I'm not trying to nitpick. But we are in year 2013, damn near year 2014. And you mean to tell me the Xbox One controller still requires two AA batteries? I'll say it one, one more time. We are in year 2013, a damn near year 2014. And you want to tell a brand that the Xbox One controller still requires two AA batteries. And if you don't get the AA batteries, you still have to buy a play and charge kit. Why can't it just be like Sony's controller to where you just plug, plug, plug it in into your console and that's how, how it charges. Hopefully Microsoft, <laughs> hopefully Microsoft changes that. But like I said, I'm giving you that 100% breakdown in this video. So both controllers are, you know, great, con great, great controllers and, and stuff like that. And you can't really go wrong with one controller or the other. But Microsoft really does have to have a controller to where you don't have to buy a play and charge kit or some batteries. Come on, Microsoft. Cloud gaming. Now, I think it was back during E3 to where Microsoft, they talked about cloud gaming just a little bit. And they said to how they added over 300,000 servers to the Xbox Live and how uh, the online gaming experience would just be so much better on the Xbox One because of cloud gaming and how all games will have dedicated servers. And then the Xbox One fanboys just gathered and said, yeah! <laughs> The superior console. <laughs> I do think some people are paying a little bit too much attention to cloud gaming. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it it, it won't be a big part of these next-gen consoles because I do feel, if done right, cloud gaming does have the potential to be a big part of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, and I do think it can improve the overall gameplay experience we have on these next-gen consoles. Both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One will have cloud gaming. On the Xbox One, I think the cloud game gaming service is uh, Azure. And on PlayStation 4, it's, Gai it's Gaiakai. So both will have cloud gaming. And, um, you know, but I think the purpose of cloud gaming more on the Xbox One side is to improve the overall online experience you have on Xbox One. That's why you keep on hearing them talk about dedicated servers on the Xbox One. You will no longer have to experience lag and disconnections and stuff like that. And I think the purpose of Gaikai on PlayStation 4 is more, you know, to uh, stream the PlayStation 1 games and PS2 games and PS3 games. That's, that's how we're going to have some sort of form of backwards compatibility on PlayStation 4 is through Gaikai. So... Again, both will have cloud gaming. Um, I think Xbox One though will come with cloud gaming already ready when Xbox One uh, launch, uh, launch launches, and Sony has already said cloud gaming will not be available until early 2014. So, you know, I, I I don't know too much about cloud gaming, you know, but again, I do feel like it has the potential, you know, to make the overall gameplay experience we have on these next gen consoles better. So only time will tell just how important cloud gaming you know becomes you know on playstation 4 or xbox one so we'll just have have to see
Now getting into playing games as you download. That's a thing I hated <laughs> on these next gen consoles that if you went to the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Live Marketplace and you was like, let me download this game. Let me download this movie. Let me download this add-on DLC for Bioshock Infinite. You couldn't play games while downloading. And as a gamer, you hate to where when you're downloading something, you can't play games. <laughs> like, that's a thing that gamers hate. So I love that that's incorporated both into the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One while you're downloading lo something, you can still play games. So that's great. Going on to live streaming. Now, you will be able to live stream your games on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with the game DVR feature. So that's great. And, um... Live streaming is it's becoming this big thing. A lot of uh, you, uh, 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 YouTubers and uh, professional gamers and just people who, you know, love live streaming and showing the world how good they are at, you know, whatever game it is that they're live streaming. People love to live stream. So live streaming on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is great. Xbox One will, will be using Twitch to live stream. And on PlayStation 4, you can use Twitch and or Ustream. So, um... The thing is on Xbox One, I'm not really sure exactly how the live stream, uh, the live streaming thing on Xbox One is going to work. On PlayStation 4, you know, they already showed off to, to how when you're live streaming a game, you know, uh, your friend can watch you live stream that game in like a chat room and then you know if you can't get get like past a, a a certain part in that game your friend can take over the controller while still in your live stream and play the game for you so that's great and i i i feel like live streaming on playstation 4 is going to be a huge everyone's going to be live streaming on playstation 4 okay and uh so I'm, I'm not really sure about how exactly it works on xbox one you know can can people still you know can your friends watch you play games on the Xbox One while in like a chat room the same way you can on PlayStation 4. I don't know, but you will be able to live stream your games on both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, let's talk about PSN versus Xbox Live. Now, you pretty much be a fool to say, dude, PSN is so much better than Xbox Live. Let's be serious. <laughs> no, because I have both a PS3 and an Xbox 360. And listen, th there's no denying it no more. You don't have to get butt hurt. Let's just all admit, at the end of the day, Xbox Live was just simply better than PSN, okay? But that's to be expected, okay? If, if I'm paying for an online service known as Xbox Live, okay, on a yearly or monthly subscription, whichever one you may choose, okay, meanwhile, PSN is completely free. If PSN was on the same level of Xbox Live, if not better and was free, people are going to be like, Microsoft. What the hell am I paying for? <laughs> so that was to be expected. You pretty much get what you, what you pay for. And that's why Xbox Live was better than PSN. You had to pay for it. And because online gaming is such a big part of, you know, playing games today on these consoles, like I, I still remember to where online gaming was first incorporated into the PlayStation 2 to where when the PlayStation 2 was out, then the network adapter came out and you could buy it for, I think it was like $40 at, at the time. If you bought it, you had to attach it to the back of your, I still remember doing that. So to see online gaming go from that to this big thing today to where everyone is playing games, games online. Some people don't even play single player games anymore. All they do is play online. Listen to this guy. Listen to this guy. Listen to this Negro. I would just like to, you know, uh, dedicate this video to you, Jeremy, the gamer twenty three twenty three. What's up? Okay. You know exactly what I'm gonna do. No. I'm no. going straight to that multiplayer. <laughs> straight to it. I don't even gotta think about it. So that was a big reason to why the Xbox 360 was so successful because online gaming is huge today and Xbox 360, Xbox Live offered the better online experience. So now on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, now that you have to pretty much buy PlayStation Plus to play games online on PlayStation 4, what it comes down to is what's going to give a breath. Or assist <laughs> What's going to give me more value? PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live?
Now someone please correct that brother if I'm wrong, okay? Xbox Live offers three memberships, three memberships only, okay? You get a one month for $8 out this sucker. A three month for $25 out this sucker. Uh, I don't have enough fingers. And a 12 month for $60 out this <laughs> sucker, okay? And PlayStation Plus, you can get a three month for $18 and a year for $50. So what's going to give you the most value? PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live. Let's start off with Xbox Live first, okay? Xbox Live Gold is a great thing. You can, if you have Xbox Live Gold, it just, it's just a great online experience that you can experience on the Xbox, okay? But the day you sign on Xbox Live and you get that message that says, you have three days left on your Xbox Live Gold. Would would you like to re renew it now and continue to experience greatness known as Xbox Live? The day you get that message and you're like, eh, I can't renew it now. And you revert to Xbox Live Silver, aka irrelevant. <laughs> Cause I don't even know why they still, you know, offer Xbox Live Silver. Cause you pretty much don't have any features, you know, to you, you know. So once you lose Xbox Live Gold, not only are you stripped of playing games online, but you can't do cross game chat because you can't play games online no more. You know, you can't join parties with your friends. You can't even use Netflix. You can't use uh, ESPN. You can't use internet. So you're stripped of all of these features if you don't have Xbox. Pretty much, if you don't have Xbox Live Gold, you're stripped of all the features that makes Xbox Live good. <laughs> Pretty much, that's what it comes down to. And I think that's going to be the difference between PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. Because Sony has already made it clear that you do not need PlayStation Plus for cross-game chat. You do not need PlayStation Plus to use the game DVR recording feature on PlayStation 4 to where you do need Xbox Live Gold for the game DVR recording feature. You do not need PlayStation Plus to use Netflix. You do not. <laughs> you, you know, you don't need PlayStation. Like, if you don't have PlayStation Plus, you're not, like, stripped of all of these features. You don't feel like you're on a poor man's PlayStation 4. And that's the case on Xbox Live. If you don't have Xbox Live Gold, you're stripped of all of these features. Now, to add to that, with PlayStation Plus, you get tons of free games, and I'm not talk. I'm not talk talking about some garbage games that got like a one out of ten. No, I'm talking about quality title, like great games. So you're like, I cannot believe this is free, but because you have PlayStation Plus. All these great games are free, so you get tons of free games, tons of free discounts, you get access to all these exclusive betas, and it's like, over time, I do think PlayStation Plus offers more value. That's not, that's not me being a fanboy of Sony, I'm just, I'm, my brother is just speaking his face. <laughs> so, I, I really think in the long run, PlayStation Plus does offer more value than Xbox Live because when you lose Xbox Live, you're pretty much you're on a poor man's Xbox. <laughs> you know, you're stripped of all of these features. Now, to add on, this is not me nitpicking, but if it, if it, if it really does mean something to you, on Xbox Live, the maximum amount of friends you can have is 1,000. That's great because most likely no one is going to reach 1,000 friends, especially 1,000 friends that they consistently play with. So, and on PlayStation 4, the maximum is 2,000. You know, just, just just to take that into consideration. But it should be very interesting how PSN versus Xbox Live goes for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, motion control gaming, which it, it, it never really picked up you know with a lot of gamers now it kind of really all took off with the wii when the wii first came out and that's and that was the wii's big gimmick it had the motion control stuff and it was new to gaming now i know the playstation 2 had the playstation eye camera and it kind of had some type of but still it, it didn't really start until nintendo introduced the wii and then the whole motion control thing took off that's when sony said screw it we're coming out with playstation <laughs> and then that's when xbox said screw it we're coming out with connect and I don't even think motion control gaming is bad. You know, with the Kinect and the PlayStation Move and how they're trying to, you know, get gamers off, <laughs> you know, get gamers from from constantly sitting down and playing games, so you know, kind of doing some activity, some activity in playing games. I have no gripe against that. The thing is, it just never took off. Like play, like who really, you know, needs to buy PlayStation Move or Kinect? in order to, you know, have a great experience on 
Xbox or PlayStation. You don't you don't really need it, and no game has really come out for PlayStation or the Connect or well, well for PlayStation or Xbox that has really used the PlayStation Move or the Connect. You know. Um, to its highest potential, and I'm not even. I, I I honestly think the Connect and PlayStation Move still has potential if done right. Kind 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 of like cloud gaming. It's, it has the potential if done right, but no game has come out yet that has really shown you know why a gamer needs to buy PlayStation Move or why we need to buy the the Connect. And because the Xbox One comes bundled with the Connect as of right now, because Microsoft is still sticking to it, saying no. There is no way on God's green earth that we will ever come out with the Xbox One without the Kinect. That will just not happen. But how many how many changes have they made on the Xbox One? <laughs> so as, as of right now, yes, all Xbox Ones will come with the Kinect, and they're making that an optional thing on PlayStation 4 to where you can buy the PlayStation Move if you want to and the PlayStation 4 eye camera if you want to. So, you know, um, Again, mo motion control gaming, it, it does have the potential if done right, but no game for PlayStation or Xbox, you know, has really, you know, um, come out. And, 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 and even for the Wii U, for, for with the whole gamepad thing, no game has really, like, with, with all these gimmicks going on now in gaming, no game has really come out that has, you know, the game, that, that has the gamer saying, oh my god, I have to buy a PlayStation Move, or I have to buy a Kinect. It just, it just hasn't ha happened yet. So, in due time, maybe, you know, a game will come out to where, you know, motion control gaming will, like, take off, but only time will tell, okay? Now, we got that PlayStation Vita and... Smart glass. <laughs> I mean, uh, the the Xbox. You know, we as we all know, my Microsoft doesn't have you know a handheld gaming platform as as of right now. Maybe in the future that will change, and they'll be like, here's our handheld. It's called the Xbox platform. <laughs> I don't know, but they came up with the Xbox One. And I would not be surprised if they named it l literally the Xbox hand handheld or the Xbox platform. W wouldn't surprise a brother one bit, okay? But um, the PlayStation Vita, which is going to be a huge part of the integration with the PlayStation 4 because the remote play seems to be improved. Um, you have all these games coming to the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. You know, you'll be able to cross game chat from your PlayStation 4 to someone who's on their PlayStation Vita. Like, that's crazy to me. And the, the PlayStation Vita, even though pe people say it's dead or, you know, it's irrelevant, what all the PlayStation Vita needs is games. That's the case for every gaming platform out there. If you have great games on whatever platform it is, people will play it. And that's really all the PlayStation v v Vita needs. And because it's getting, it's getting so much indie game support out of out of the badonka donk donk, indie games are all over PlayStation, okay? And because it's getting all this support and it got a price drop now I really do feel like as far as from you know the PlayStation Vita to the smart glass as far as integration with the PlayStation 4 and the Vita and integration with the Xbox one and you know the smartphones or smart glass whatever uh, PlayStation definitely wins in that category so you know um, it should be interesting to see you know how uh, you know how important the PlayStation Vita will be to the PlayStation 4 to have, you know, a better, you know, gameplay experience with that. So, again, only time will tell. Indie games, indie games, indie games, indie games, indie games, indie games, and even more indie games. <laughs> now, we all know both the Xbox, well, now, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, because they changed that too, but both will support indie games. And uh, indie games, uh, they are a great addition to uh, these consoles. You know, now that you can go to the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Live Marketplace and there is a section for indie games, that is great, you know, and if these indie game developers continue to release great indie games, I think that could be great for gaming as far as, you know, the variety the variety of games that game that, that gamers are playing. That that will be great. And you know, because indie games seem to have huge support as far as with PlayStation and indie games and you know as Xbox as well but it does seem like indie game developers favor more 
PlayStation than Xbox. So when it, when it comes to indie games, I do even feel like PlayStation has the advantage there because you see all the support that any that indie game developers are giving to the PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation 4 and stuff like that. And you're just seeing like even at Gamescom, pretty much half of their conference was talking about indie games, indie games, indie games. Blah, blah, blah. So it's just like, yo, like if you really love to play your indie games okay you can't get enough of playing those indie games games like journey and guacamole guacamole and all these other great indie game titles that will come out in the future i do feel like playstation has the advantage in that category not saying that xbox one is completely dismissing in indie games which that some point they did <laughs> but now they're not but it does it just seems that indie game developers are more for playstation than xbox one okay now this is me going to the launch titles for playstation 4 and xbox one now playstation 4 some of the launch titles it will have and i read the quote they will have kills on shadowfall knack drive club dc universe online planet side 2 maybe i'm not sure if that will be a launch title and warframe okay those will be all the launch titles now pretty pretty much the big launch title exclusive that playstation 4 will have is kills on shadowfall okay if you buy a play PlayStation, playstation 4 on launch nine times out of ten you're getting kills on shadowfall for you know your first exclusive game xbox one has rise son of rome has Dead Rising 3, has Killer Instinct, Forza Mo Motorsport 5, has uh, Connect Sports because all Xbox One come, comes with Connect, so has Connect Sports and Loco Cycle. Now, people are saying that, uh, oh my god, Xbox One just completely is dominating PlayStation when it comes to exclusives. As of right now, <laughs> I as, as of right now, even I would, would admit, yes, the launch titles on Xbox, the exclusive launch titles on Xbox One are somewhat better than what PlayStation has to offer, you know, but as far as long run exclusives, <laughs> as far as, as exclusives go in the long run, no, 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 unless... Unless Xbox is coming out with a whole, a whole bunch of new IPs, the only exclusive I still care about on Xbox is, say it with me, my brothers and sisters, Halo. <laughs> Halo is all I care about. And if Halo 5 ends up being greatness known as how Halo 2 or Halo 3, I'm buying an Xbox One. I'm sorry. But yes, as of right now, the Xbox One does, I does I think, have better, you know, exclusive launch titles to it. But in the long run, again, Sony will eventually come back. Trust the brother when I say that, okay? Now, um, getting to the last part, the price, okay? The prices for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One at the end of the day is going to be a big factor into what console you choose to get you know playstation 4 is four hundred dollars that xbox one is 500 because it's bundled with the connect and microsoft has said no we're not taking out the connect if you don't have 500 you ain't getting the xbox one so it's going to come down to that 100 dollar price difference okay um which console uh, offers the best value to you as far as the overall gameplay experience as far as you know the online experience all that stuff the indie games everything just the entire experience that you can get on PlayStation 4 or Xbox one now again it seems to me as far as value goes you're getting more on the PlayStation 4 for a less price you're getting more on the PlayStation 4 for a less price. Now, that's not me knocking Xbox One. I, I, I honestly do feel like even though Microsoft has made a ton of terrible, terrible decisions, terrible decisions from, from stick with the 360 to deal with it to all this other stuff that made, that kind of ruined the image for Microsoft as far as being in the gaming industry. They have made improvements, the necessary improvements. So if Microsoft continues to, you know, um, you know, uh, make smart decisions, you know, and come out with new IPs and stuff like that, and don't just make the Xbox One, you know, about entertainment. Make it, you know, like 50% games, 50% entertainment. I don't know, whatever you need to do, you know. Xbox One, 
you know, it's going, it's going to be a great console. You know, I, I know you always have people say, oh my God, the Xbox One is completely irrelevant. The PlayStation 4 kills it. Xbox One is going to sell, okay? Make no mistake about it. Xbox One is going to sell, okay? So, but it, again, it comes down to your personal preference. Don't let someone, you know, uh, 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 persuade you into buying the, the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One. Don't buy the PlayStation 4 because your friends are getting it. Don't buy the Xbox One because your friends are getting it. Buy it because you want it. Buy it because... In, in terms of the overall gameplay experience, you think the Xbox One is better or you think the PlayStation 4 is better. No one can tell you what console to buy, okay? If you want to buy the Xbox One because you feel it has better exclusives, first off, slap yourself. But that's your opinion, okay? You can buy it. It's your money or your parents' money, whatever, okay? So at the end of the day, both consoles will be great. Both consoles are going to sell out out, out of the badonka donk donk the Wii U is in trouble. <laughs> I just had to get that out there. I'm not trying to dog the Wii U, but the Wii U, oh my God. When these consoles come out, come on, let's be serious. And, you know, again, it's personal preference. Which console offers the best value to you? So hopefully in this video, I helped you decide with that, uh, with that 100 with that 100 breakdown. <laughs> hopefully I helped you guys decide to which console to buy, the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. I will no longer be talking about these consoles. I am done until November 15th, 2013, the day my social life ends. Even though I never had that much of a social life. <laughs> but PlayStation 4, Xbox One, it is an exciting time if you're a gamer right now. Um, man, I cannot wait.